Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Akrin and in this video I'm going to show you how to install Arathena on Windows. We're going to need a few things first, so head on over to your web browser and do a search for Git. Git is the revision control system that Arathena uses to control its source. Once you're on that page, go ahead and download the package and install. Once you've got that, you'll need to also download Tortoise Git. Tortoise Git provides a graphical user interface so that you can control your Arathena a lot easier. Once you're on the download page, go ahead and download the package. The final piece of software you'll need to download is Visual Studio Express. Once you've downloaded Visual Studio, it will take a while to install, so just let that run for a while. Once you've got everything installed, we can go ahead and grab the Arathena source. We're going to clone Arathena using Tortoise Git. First you need to grab the URL, click on the green button. You can click the little copy to clipboard button and then head on over to a new folder. Once you've decided where you need to install it on your hard drive, right click anywhere and then you'll see some new options provided by Tortoise Git. We're going to clone. Tortoise Git has this nifty feature where anything that's already in your clipboard automatically gets copied into the URL box. For normal usage you won't need to tick any other options, so just go ahead and click OK and let it download. Once that's all done, go ahead and click close. Next we're going to need a way of hosting the Arathena databases. These are stored in MySQL. In this tutorial we're going to use RASQL, which we can also obtain from GitHub. RASQL's readme file does state that it's for local testing only, but there's actually no reason why it can't be used for any other purposes. So as before, go ahead and copy that link to the clipboard, go back over to your folder and clone the repository. When that's done, hit close. Next we're going to compile our Athena. Compile our Athena, we're going to need to open a solution file. The solution files within the our Athena repository are numbered. These numbers correspond to build versions from Microsoft. These numbers are used in different versions of Visual Studio. For example, if you're using the 2015 version of Visual Studio, you need to open up Arathena 14. Once you've navigated to the folder where you've stored Arathena, you can just go ahead and double click on the solution file. Once the solution file has been opened, we can start to build Arathena. Within the Solution Explorer, you can right click on Solution and hit build solution. This will build the four projects that are available in this solution. They're the login server, chat server, map server and the map cache. In this example we're not going to touch the map cache but there's no reason why you can't build it at the same time as the others. As soon as the output box at the bottom of the screen says four succeeded we'll move on to the SQL stage. For now we don't need Visual Studio anymore so you can go ahead and close it. In order to start MySQL we need to go into the RASQL folder that you downloaded from GitHub. Once in the folder, all you need to do is simply run MySQL start. RASQL is pre-configured, so you're pretty much already good to go. As soon as you get the session manager open up, hit open. As this is pre-configured, we already have a database made called Ragnarok. The next thing we need to do is import the SQL files. Those can all be found within the SQL folder in the repository we downloaded earlier. To load one up, simply browse to them. All of the database tables that our Athena requires to run are stored within main.sql. So we're going to open that up first. Once it's open, you can just hit the big run button. That'll now import the table structures into the Ragnarok database. Once it's done, we're going to do the same for the logs table. When that's done, we're going to head on back over to our, our Athena folder. There's a simple batch file contained within the repository. All we need to do is double click on runserver.bat. Click allow access on any firewall warnings, otherwise you won't be able to connect. Once the servers have finished loading, they should look a little something like this. This concludes our video tutorial, thanks for watching.